Hi, welcome back to Box of Avenue. Today we are going to talk all about gallery walls. Where to find art, how to curate your gallery walls, where to find frames, where to get your art printed, how to make it all look cohesive. And I'm even going to show you how to template out your gallery wall and plan it so that you don't get a bunch of holes in your wall. If this is your first time here, my name is Chloe. I write the blog Box and Avenue, and I want to take a second to thank Fracture for sponsoring this video. They print photographs onto glass frames. They're really beautiful, and I'm really excited to share them with you. Okay, so gallery walls. Uh, I think, first of all, I want to start with the whole topic of less is more. At a lot of times, clients come to me and they're saying, like, we want something on the walls here, we want something on the walls here, we want something on the walls here. And yes, I think that it's important to add artwork or accessories to your walls, but I don't think that you need to cover all of your walls with art. So really, when it comes to gallery walls or artwork in general, I really think that less is more. Of course, there's sometimes when more is more and that's the look that you're going for, but if you're not going intentionally for that more is more look where you've got every square inch covered, I say less is more. When you're thinking about artwork and what type of artwork you want to put in your house, I start the same way that I start with decorating and I start to think about the vibe and like the overall feel and mood that I want the room to have. So I really want the artwork to accentuate the decor and accentuate the overall vibe that the room is giving off. So if you have like a hallway and you want it to be, feel really bright and airy, you could do some watercolors and some sketches or maybe like in my entryway that's painted dark. Maybe I want to go a little bit moodier, so I would do some oil paintings and maybe some portraits or something like that. So I think first you start to kind of think, just like when decorating, what's the overall mood and overall vibe? And then you can start sourcing your artwork. And it's one of those things that doesn't happen like, okay, I need to find X, Y, and Z art pieces, and now I'm just going to go out and find them. I find that the most special pieces sort of come to you slowly, just like furniture, and you curate it slowly over time. When I am putting together a gallery wall, I have to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of gallery walls because sometimes I think that they can feel a little bit sloppy, but when done right, I think that they look really, really nice. And when done right, I mean, look, it's all, <laughs> beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But for me, when I'm just coming at it from like a designer's perspective, I really like to have it look nice and put together and really thought through. And so to get that look, I really like to do like an old with a new and kind of create juxtaposition with the artwork and the frames and the materials. When I'm thinking about what types of frames and what type of art I want to use, I think about how I can create that juxtaposition and kind of combine old with new. So I will look for a vintage frame and then I'll put more contemporary piece in the vintage frame or I'll look for a really modern frame and then I can put a vintage piece of artwork or maybe a watercolor in it or something. So that way I'm creating sort of that blend of the old and the new coming together. And then once you start to place all of those pieces together, it starts to look really cool and really curated. Some of my favorite places to find frames are just, you don't have to go super expensive. Like Of course, Restoration Hardware and West Elm have beautiful frames, but you can find really good frames at like Target or Ikea or um, Amazon has some good ones too. What I look for when I am buying a frame is I want the frame to feel really delicate because I think that that looks a little bit more modern and it will look really nice with the art. I think that letting the art speak for itself rather than having the frame sort of compete with the artwork will make it feel a little bit more put together. And then if I'm looking for some vintage frames, we do this a lot for our shop and for clients. We'll go to flea markets or we'll go to thrift shops or antique malls and we'll just look for any old vintage frame that while well, we look for the glass is in good condition, we want to make sure that the corners are holding up nicely, the back isn't damaged, the wood isn't damaged. Typically go for wood or if we can find some metal, but rarely will we find metal. I like to go for a natural wood or a black wood. Sometimes if the gilded frame, we'll go for a gilded frame, if the guild is really nice and the frame looks really nice, sometimes they can feel a little bit heavy and chunky, so it just depends on, on the overall look that I'm going for. But you can find really great inexpensive vintage frames for like 20 bucks, which is a great deal. In those frames though, you'll find some really interesting art. When we're looking at frames at like flea markets and stuff, we're not really looking at the art. Sometimes you'll find some incredible art too. But really, we're just kind of looking for some really great frames, knowing that we can just take it home, remove the artwork that we don't care so much for, and then put in some new artwork that we really love. I think one of the ways that you can make a gallery wall feel 
really unique to you is by mixing materials. And I love doing this because I think that it makes it feel a little bit more updated and elevated. When I say mixing materials, I mean mixing media. So you could have maybe a shadow box with uh, like a found seashell or something from, a tr from your travels. And then you have an oil painting and then you have a photograph. And when I discovered Fracture, I was really, really excited because I think that it just adds that additional layer to a gallery wall. It's perfect for gallery walls. They have all different types of sizes. And what you do is you just upload your photograph online. It takes like five seconds and then they just print it on glass and send it to you. So I knew that I wanted to put this gallery wall together and I thought that this horse photograph would be perfect because I also had that cowboy print. When I got my prints from Fracture earlier this week, I was so excited and totally blown away by the quality. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I knew that they were going to be good, but like they are so crystal clear. And if you had some family photos that you wanted to get printed out, I think that you're really going to love it. I also, I've been wanting an acrylic or glass calendar for so long. Like I've been wanting to do this for probably a year. And I don't know why, I just, I haven't done it. And so when I was ordering these prints, I thought, you know what, I, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to put together a quick template for a calendar and get a calendar printed and see if it works. I wasn't even sure if it was going to work. And I'm so excited I did because now I finally have my, <laughs> I have my glass calendar. And this, I thought, I, this is a little bit off topic of gallery walls, but uh, I'll include a link for my little template if you wanted to do this. But now with everybody being home for school and work, I wanted to show this to you real quick because this is going to come in handy for me and I'm really excited because it's going to keep me a little bit more organized. I think that sometimes we want to tell our family's story and we want to showcase all of our family photos, but we don't always want like a whole wall of family photos, although that can be really cool too if you like did it in black and white or something. But anyways, so a really good way to sort of stitch that story together and tell your family's story without doing a whole wall of family photos is to find pieces of your family's story. So maybe it's, um, like I said, a seashell from your travels or vacation, and then it's a piece of art that you found while you were there, or maybe you have something commissioned that um, is of a beach that you love. I had a client where she had these two photographs. She has a son and a daughter, and her son was jumping off of this sand bluff, and her daughter was jumping off of this same sand bluff, but two different photos. And so I thought that, that would be really neat to blow up and then place side by side in sort of this gallery format. And with Fracture, that would be so neat to have these big glass prints, family photos, then you could have some of the seashells, or you could have a print of the beach or something. And I think that that's a really nice way to sort of tell that story without having just like a ton of family photos. With the gallery wall that I planned here, I knew that I wanted to mix the materials. So I've got an oil painting. We have a print of a watercolor, even better if I had like a real original piece, watercolor piece. And then I have this page from a phone book. This is actually the phone book for our town. And when we remodeled our kitchen, I found it like taped to the original cupboards and Greg's grandma had written all the phone numbers on it and I thought that it was really special so I saved it and framed it. So there's a good way to tell tell your family's story showcasing really a free artwork and it's something unique and interesting and it's a conversation piece. And then I have these really beautiful glass prints from Fracture which added to the overall look of the gallery wall. And I think having the combination of the watercolor, the oil painting, the glass print, and then the framed um, page from the phone book, this all comes together in this really unique and curated gallery wall. Sometimes you see like fake signs or like spindles or arrows or like wood letters. And I think if you're going for that sort of contemporary modern gallery wall look, having the glass prints is a more modern way of adding that additional material without going with something like the spindle or like the wood sign or whatever. Another way to instantly sort of make everything feel a little bit more modern and more uh, contemporary is to mat things down. So you can, like when we're going frame shopping or something at an antique store, I will look for really interesting, unique frames. So if the frame is really long and narrow, I think that that's so cool. Or we'll go for an oversized frame and then we will have a mat made and mat it down. You can have a custom mat made at like craft supply stores or you can go online and have custom mats made too. But I think that that intention, making it feel more curated, there's more thought put into it, it will speak volumes once you get it hung up on the wall. So I really love matting things down and I love turning things to black and white. So if you did want to do a gallery wall that was 
family photos. I've seen them where they're really beautiful and you can do like a series of nine, like three rows of three. I love it when the frames are really delicate and then the photos are matted down and all turned to black and white. And then it really just looks like this beautiful gallery of all of your family photos. So let's talk a little bit about actually hanging your gallery wall because <laughs> the prep will pay off, I promise. So once you figure out where you want your gallery wall to be, you've got your spot picked out, you figured out kind of the overall vibe, then you start to think about what kind of art you want. And it's kind of one of two ways. Like you either already have some art you want to hang up or you know you want to have a gallery wall and you need to go find art. So if you have some art that you know you want to show off, you can use that art as a jumping off point and then sort of build around it. Or you can sort of build your gallery wall first and then start to think about where you're going to source your art from. So there are tons of different websites where you can source beautiful artwork from. I think the key is, if you're planning a gallery wall, is to not only do prints from the internet because then it starts to feel a little flat. So if you can, go to an antique mall or have something commissioned by an original piece and combine that original piece with a print. And a really cool thing is that you can go online and there's lots of museums that have their collections available that you can download and print. And so if you're going to do that, I say just have it printed on a really high quality paper. And then sometimes if I want it to, to really look like artwork, I'll remove the glass so that there isn't a glare and then it really just kind of looks like a painting. Once you've found your art and you know what you're going to do, you start to kind of think about your frame size and then maybe you have to order some frames or you've already found some vintage frames or something like that. Then the prep work, it's gonna, it really pays off. This is going to prevent you from having a bunch of holes in the wall. So what I do is I just take some butcher block paper and I'll measure out each frame. So I start to get these little templates of paper. And then a good trick is on the back side, I'll mark where the hook needs to go. So that way, once I get my template up on the wall, I'll put a little X where the hook needs to go. And then I know I can just put the hook right there, remove the paper, hang the art, and it prevents me from putting a bunch of holes in the wall. I really like to take the time to measure out the wall, measure out my frames. You can use graph paper. We do this if we're doing some design work, quick sketches, and I'll measure out how far off the wall each frame needs to be, where the center point is, how many inches between each frame, and I'll really get it lined up so that way when I go to put my first piece of paper up or my first template up, I know exactly where it needs to go and I can really build the gallery wall around that. If you take the time to do that prep work after you've got it all mapped out, you've put in your hooks, it's so easy to just hang up your artwork and then walk away and be done with it. Some of my favorite gallery wall combinations, there's lots of different ways, and I think I don't think you need to overthink it so much. It is nice to really plan out, but you can do gallery walls in so many different ways. So I really, really like when just two pieces of artwork are stacked. I love that look. I also love when there's a picture sconce above the artwork. I think that that looks so beautiful. You can go asymmetrical with your gallery walls. You can go symmetrical with this gallery wall. I basically did a three foot by three foot square and then built my art around that. You don't have to overthink it. And if you're ever needing to add like an additional material, I think that you can go back to like that overall vibe and feel of the gallery wall. You can always add in some sort of other object like a horseshoe would be good for me, or maybe it's a bit or something like that, or you can get something framed in a shadow box and then add to the overall gallery so that it starts to feel more curated. So I have a blog post all about gallery walls with some inspiration pictures. If you want to check it out, I will put a link in the description below. I will also link to Fracture and um, some of my favorite artists and favorite places to shop for frames. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it gets you inspired to plan a gallery wall. And don't forget, you can always visit me at boxofavenue.com.